I know it's really cold in a lot of the country right now, and I want to give a big shout out to Sebring, Florida for bringing us down to the bass fishing mecca down here in Florida. It's a great time of year to be down here. It's a great time of year to catch some fish, do all kinds of stuff that all of us bass fishermen love doing. And so Sebring was nice enough to help us come down here to get us hooked up with guides, to get us hooked up with awesome places to go fishing. So if you're looking for a place to visit in Florida, if you're looking for somewhere to go and spend your time to catch a lot of fish, check out Sebring, Florida. What's up guys, welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. It is Alex with the Alex Red Fishing YouTube channel, but today we're on the Monster Bass YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about walking bait. And so you've learned how to walk a walking bait. You've taken the time to learn this technique, but today I wanna to kind of talk to you about, you know, fine tuning it, taking it to the next level, you know, getting it to where you can really optimize your time on the water with this bait and to catch more fish on it. So we've got a lot of docks down through here. We're fishing some of these docks, looking for some post spawn fish that have spawned around these docks, trying to get them to eat this big Ragnar walking bait. And so, you know, the deal with a walking bait is there's, you look at it and you think it's really simple. Like I just walk it back and forth, that's all there is to it. But you can start adding some complexities to it to just make it a little more efficient than just walking. And so one thing I want to start out with is actually putting a leader on your top water rod. So normally most people just go straight 40, 50 pound braid on a top water. What I like to do is actually put a little bit of fluorocarbon or mono in front of it. And what that actually does is this braid has, it's so supple, it has a, a lot of recoil. And so when you hit that topwater bait and it actually walks, what'll happen is this braid, instead of being pulled away from the bait, it'll bunch up in front of the bait and that front hook will actually wrap around that braid. And you'll spend a lot more time trying to get that braid unwrapped around those hooks than you will actually fishing the bait. So with a little bit of fluorocarbon or mono in the front, it has a lot more recoil. And so when you pull that fluorocarbon or that mono, it's actually gonna straighten out and get out in front of that bait and give some distance between the line and the hooks so that you can keep walking that thing and just stay really efficient with it on the water. So when we come up to a piece of cover structure, whatever it is, whether it's man-made, whether it's natural, just like this dock here, this is really where I'm gonna slow down. I'm gonna start taking my time to break down this dock, really make sure that I'm fishing both sides of the boat slips, the fronts, the backs, the posts, and everything like that. It's also where I'm gonna change my cadence. And I think that's the big thing where cadence comes into play is what you're fishing and what you're actually fishing around and what kind of fish that you're fishing for. So like in this scenario, obviously down here in Florida, dealing with some post spawn fish, some fish that should be hanging out around these docks, chilling around these dock posts. What I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna take some time to work this bait slow, give them a chance to look at it. You know, and that can be a variety of different things. And it's almost playing with the cadences to figure out what these fish want. Just like a jerk bait, a topwater can be exactly the same. And I think a lot of people, when they look at a walking bait like this, they think they just gotta keep it going, keep it moving the entire time, which isn't entirely true. You can pause this thing, especially when you get it around the front of a boat dock post like I'm about to here. Slow that thing down, let it sit there, just twitching it, giving it time to sit there and hang out because a lot of the times, especially with these funky post spawn fish, you'll have bass that are hanging around these boat dock posts that will sit there and look at that bait until it does something just different enough. Whether that's the, the tail feather on this thing that we've got tied up on the, the back hook flares a certain way or it twitches a certain way or rolls a certain way, then they'll react to it. And you know, really taking your time to break down things, vary cadences, play with cadences and kind of figure out exactly what these fish want can be super important. Now you know the total opposite to that is when you actually get around open water when you're dealing with different kinds of fish different kinds of fisheries so we're in florida so florida is going to be completely different than smith lake alabama it's which is going to be completely different than minnesota but the thing is is when you start to think about the kind of fish that you're actually fishing around and what they actually like that's when you can really start to dial in cadences and so you know around largemouth for the most part in my experience you know, slowing down a little bit more, giving those fish a little bit more of a chance to really see that bait and to let them hammer it has been, in my experience, the best way to catch them. Now, when I get around spots and smallmouths, especially spotted bass, you almost can't fish that bait fast enough. It's when you really get out there, that's when you're not slowing down. It's when you're not really worried about trying to let them see it and look at it more you're trying to get them to react to it you know and that's where you're talking about clear deep water scenarios bringing those fish out of deeper water and that's when i'm just going to be working that thing as hard as i possibly can making it dart making it slap throw water really really hard 
And the thing about that is, again, instead of trying to trick them into eating it, more you're trying to get them just to come up to blast it to react to it and you know and you can apply that here i apply it back home in tennessee when i'm around any kind of cover structure whatever it is i'm going to slow down i'm going to pick that apart just like i would if i slowed down and flipped a jig you really want to pay, break it apart make multiple casts at it really give yourself a chance to draw a fish out of there but when i'm on a big flat or i'm trying to just move down a bank i'm going to be working that thing a lot faster a lot harder trying to get those fish to react to it and so I think the biggest thing with cadence and really what you can learn with fishing a walking blade and playing with your cadence is learning exactly what kind of, what the fish want, what they're going to react to, whether you're gonna to have to trick them or not, whether they're being funky or not. I mean, it's just like any other bait in any other experience, but playing with those cadences are so important to catch and fish. So next time you're out on the water, next time you've got a walking bait in your hand and you're trying to figure out what the fish want, Play with a little bit of everything. Don't just straight walk that thing. Pause it, stop it, walk it hard, walk it slow, make it throw a bunch of water. Really play with your cadences and figure out exactly what the fish are wanting.